You might be watching this while doing something risky, eating and breathing. It sounds harmless, but choking is the top cause of accidental death in kids under five. Why would evolution set us up to choke on dinner? In theory, eating and breathing should be like two parallel highways, separate and safe, but not in humans. We combine both lanes in one narrow tunnel, the pharynx. Here, you're in food pipe cross paths. The only thing standing between a meal and your lungs is a tiny flap of cartilage. When you swallow, it has just milliseconds to snap shut over the windpipe, letting the food pass safely into your stomach. Why would evolution make such a dangerous design? The blame goes back about 700,000 years. As our ancestors stood upright, their necks and skulls reshaped, pushing the throat lower in the body. The benefit? We got better control over breathing and, eventually, speech. But the downside was that our airway became exposed. Babies are born with a higher larynx, like most mammals. They can drink and breathe at the same time. But after about one year of age, the larynx descends and with it comes the lifelong risk of choking. Every day, without thinking, you swallow roughly a thousand times, adding up to about three liters of saliva. Yes, saliva, often overlooked, but it's a biochemical superhero. Ever bite your cheek or burn your tongue, but barely feel it? That's your saliva soothing the wound behind the scenes. Saliva also plays a huge role in oral hygiene. When you smell bad breath, it's usually sulfur gases released by bacteria in your mouth. Saliva sweeps away food debris and keeps those bacteria in check. But modern diets, full of sugar and acid, constantly challenge this system. A single sip of soda creates an acid attack. Saliva rushes to neutralize it, try to raise the pH back to a safe range to protect your tooth and nail. But this system wasn't built for 24-7 acid warfare. Coffee, fruit juice, energy drinks, donuts, all keep the battlefield wet and hostile. Even though humans have one of the most advanced oral defense systems in the world, we're also among the most cavity-prone species on Earth. The mismatch between modern lifestyles and ancient biology doesn't stop there. Our early ancestors relied on tough, fibrous roots and raw meat. To chew that, they needed broad jaws and extra molars. But as cooking, slicing, and mashing took over, our jaws shrank. Unfortunately, our third molars Wisdom teeth didn't get the memo. They kept growing, but now there's no space. The result? Pain, impaction, and dental surgery. But it's not all doom and gloom. Evolution also gave us a powerful line of defense, taste. You might remember the tongue map from school. Sweet at the tip, salty and sour on the sides, bitter at the back. Cute diagram, completely wrong. Modern science shows all parts of the tongue can detect all five basic tastes, sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami savory. The differences lie in sensitivity, not exclusivity. Taste wasn't designed for fun. It was meant to keep us alive. Sweetness signals energy-rich carbs. Saltiness tells us we've found essential minerals. Umami means protein. Sourness could be unripe or spoiled. Bitterness, likely poison. These flavor signals were once our ancestors' only food safety test in the wild. But taste is actually much more than what your tongue detects. Most of what we call flavor comes from smell. As you chew, volatile molecules rise up the back of your throat into your nasal passages, a process called retronasal olfaction. Your brain combines the signals from your nose and tongue into a single experience, flavor. The tongue gives you five taste notes. Your nose adds thousands of aromatic variations. That's how you can instantly tell the difference between garlic noodles and spicy food, even if you can't see it. And that's why food tastes bland when your nose is stuffed during cold. Even more fascinating, the senses of taste and smell bypass your logical brain and go straight to your emotional and memory centers. A single bite of a childhood dish can trigger memories, emotions, even tears. This is flavor nostalgia and it's a survival feature. Remembering what's safe and comforting to eat is deeply wired into us. And here's the ultimate irony. All these flaws, the choking hazard, crowded teeth, fragile enamel, with a price of gaining something extraordinary, language. When the larynx dropped, it enlarged the pharyngeal space, creating a unique acoustic chamber. Combined with precise tongue and lip control, it allowed humans to produce complex vocal sounds. Daddy. 
We learn to shape vowels and consonants, modulate pitch and rhythm in milliseconds. With just air and muscle, we created language, and that changed everything. Language let us share knowledge, plan, imagine, build civilizations. But it's also the very thing that can harm us. Verbal abuse activates pain centers in the brain. Negative self-talk can trigger anxiety and depression. We're the only animals that can literally talk ourselves into despair. So, is a human mouth a design flaw? Maybe, but it's also a masterpiece of good enough engineering. Evolution doesn't chase perfection, it settles for function. Sure, we might choke once in a while, but we can also discuss the absurdity of that fact, write poetry about it, even make jokes about it. We are the only species with the ability to criticize our own design, using the very system we're criticizing. That in itself is a beautifully ironic design.